Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This week, our focus will be writing a paragraph. And we are going to use the acronym RAFT, R-A-F-F-T, to help us organize our ideas into a paragraph. So our objective or our goals for this week is to use the acronym RAFT to organize a paragraph, to select an introductory technique that will hook our reader, and to write a clear and focused answer to a question. So those are the three skills that we are going to be working on this week. This is our acronym RAFT. Each letter in the word RAFT stands for another piece to our puzzle that will be our paragraph. The R stands for reel in the reader or our hook. A stands for answer the question. F stands for fact and explanation. Notice that we have two Fs in our acronym RAFT. And then T at the end stands for a thoughtful conclusion. We are going to put this resource in our digital notebook so that we can have it um, and refer back to it anytime we need to. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. This week, our focus are just the first two letters of our acronym, the R and the A. So we are just going to be looking at how to hook our reader, how to reel in the reader, and what does our answer to the question look like. So just the first two sentences to our puzzle this week. So let's start talking about the A or the R, which is our first part. I'm trying to move myself out of the way here. So the R stands for real in the reader, which is our hook sentence. This is the very first sentence in our paragraph. And again, sentence. So this is usually a sentence or maybe two. The purpose here is to grab the reader's attention, to reel or hook them in so that they want to read the rest of, of your paragraph. Now, there are a lot of different strategies that we can use to reel in the reader. And Ms. Fox and I have listed six here for you to choose from. So on this slide, we have each lead a little explanation underneath and an example. So we have a narrative lead, so you can start off your paragraph telling a story. You can paint a scene, so you're describing a setting. You can speak right to the reader. You could start with a strong, bold statement that will almost shock your reader, make them want to keep reading. You can ask a question that gets the reader thinking and it makes them want to read more so that they're hoping you will tell them the answer. Or you can start with a really strong fact or statistic that connects to the rest of your response. And you can, any one of these will work um, as long as the writing that you do connects back to the question that you're being asked or the topic you are writing about. Our next part of our paragraph is the A in raft, which is answer the question. So this is sentence number two, and this is a clear and focus, and it always addresses the question. So this way, by the second sentence in your paragraph, we should know what your answer is or what your opinion is on the topic that you are writing about. So let's look at an example together. So this is a question, should graffiti be considered art? So graffiti is that um, the spray painting and the different words and pictures that sometimes you see on the sides of buildings. Some people think it's artwork, other people think it's like a destruction of property and it shouldn't be allowed, right? So that's the question. So for my hook, my reel in the reader, you can see the yellow sentence that's highlighted. Have you ever walked down a street and seen a breathtaking piece of art displayed on the side of a building? So notice here, I used the hook, I used the um, question technique to hook into the reader. This type of art known as graffiti sparks much debate. So that's my hook. I haven't given you my answer yet. I've just hooked you into thinking about what the rest of my paragraph will be about. The second sentence in the next box, which, which is the A, this is my answer. The beautiful pieces that these brilliant artists work so hard to create should be considered art. So now you know exactly where my answer is, right? So sentence one, I've hooked in my reader, I've given a question for them to think about, and then my second sentence is where I answer the question. Okay, so, this is what we're going to be trying to do this week. So Ms. Fox and I have a couple of different questions for you to for you to look at. We want you to practice writing a hook sentence and your answer. 
So let's look at your task. First, you'll read the question. Next, you'll select your introduction technique from our slide earlier. Then you'll write your hook sentence. And last, you'll answer the question in one sentence. So total, you're writing two, maybe three sentences. So here's practice. Question number one, is TikTok appropriate to use in school? So here in the first sentence, you'll pick an introductory technique and hook the reader something about TikTok, something about using social media in school. And then this is where you will say whether or not you believe you will say, yes, TikTok is appropriate to use in school or no, TikTok is not appropriate to use in school, whatever you feel the answer is. Here's practice question number two. Should there be winners or losers in sports or is participation the ultimate goal? So again, here you will write your hook sentence where you'll engage the reader with one of the introductory techniques and then you'll give your answer to the question. So do you think there should be a winner or a loser or is the point of sports just so that everybody comes and tries? And here's question number three. Should there be age restrictions on video games? So here you'll give a hook, you'll use one of our introductory techniques to write a sentence that hooks us about video games and lots of people play them and lots of children like to play video games in their free time. And then you'll give your answer to the question, yes, do you think there should be age restrictions or no? Do you think that students should, or kids should be able to play whatever they want? So that's your, gonna, that's your practice. And then finally, you're going to rate your understanding. So this is where I want to know how confident are you feeling with being able to write your R sentence and your A sentence in a paragraph. So you'll take this arrow and click and drag it, five being, yep, got it, I'm an all-star at this, or one being, nope, we need to, I need more help or maybe you're feeling somewhere in between, and then you'll explain the rating that you've selected. This will just help me to know, do we need to continue to practice with these two sentences, or are we ready to move on to the next piece? If you have any questions, you need some help, you want me to look at what you've got started, so hesitate to send me an email. Good luck.